I just started running a new campaign of Dungeons & Dragons. Imagine being able to regularly get a group of adults together. And it's got me excited about 3D printing again. Ignore the monsters and the adventuring minis, what DM wouldn't be excited about making little custom campsites for their players? As I've delved deep into the well of resin, I've realized I'm a bit of a dum-dum. I've been making mistakes left and right, and today I'd like to take a moment to talk about them. Hopefully I'll save some of you from making similar mistakes, but if not, maybe you'll at least experience some schadenfreude. Let's start with an easy one. Don't assume your printing platform is going to stop when it reaches the top of the track. You would think a printer would know how high it could safely raise the platform, right? It knows where the bottom is, after all. Apparently, my Mars 3 is happy to raise the roof. That's right. I'm putting you on blast, Delegu. I mean, just look at this. Thankfully, avoiding printer seppuku is easy enough by simply not spamming the up button. Was this a case of user error? Sure. Could it have been prevented in software? Easily. Moving on, let's talk about holes. I started hollowing my prints when I discovered larger models were becoming bloated. Of course, there's a financial benefit as well. Unfortunately, I didn't think to add drain holes to the first few models. Veterans of the audience probably know where this is going. After a few weeks passed, um, well, I'm just gonna show you. You see, when you print a hollow model, there's a cavity that eventually gets sealed up and this cavity will lock in a significant amount of uncured resin in the process. Over time, this resin releases gases, creating an ever-growing amount of pressure. If this pressure builds up enough, the plastic eventually cracks, and you get to explain to your significant other why your very nice bookshelves suddenly have a huge, puddle-shaped blemish in the finish. I mean, I'm gonna show it to you again. This wood has been stripped clean. The fix, thankfully, is pretty easy. For the resin, that is, not for the bookshelf. I have no idea how to match this. At me in the comments. You just need to create a couple of drainage holes so that the resin has a way to escape. One won't cut it, though. The viscosity of the resin means you'll need multiple holes so that air can enter through one end while resin exits through the other. You'll likely need multiple holes as well, depending on the complexity of the model. I guess you could use one big hole at the bottom, but you're gonna lose more detail that way. Now this next issue is one I feel is easy to make, at least if you're prone to absent-mindedness. Let's start with a hypothetical scenario. You've just finished a print, you don't have anything queued up, but you'll probably figure something out in the next few days. Well, other things come up and you forget about the printer. As days pass, the resin separates. No big issue there. That's easy enough to solve. Something worse is about to happen. Three months pass, and for one reason or another, you need to move your printer. You unplug it, lift it up, and... You've probably caught on that this isn't hypothetical. It happened to me. I'm the dummy. And let me tell you, cleaning resin out of the printer was a nightmare. Maybe you think you'll never move the printer once you've settled on a location, but things come up, accidents happen, and it just takes one bad knock to spill resin all over your hardware and your furniture. Let's not go there again. All of this is to say, if you don't have a print planned, store the resin back in its bottle. I recommend picking up a metal funnel like this, one with a mesh at the bottom. Link in the description below. Now this next mistake is one you'll likely never encounter depending on the software you use to slice your models. I was spoiled by a year of Chitobox Pro that was included with my printer, but when that license expired, so did my credit card. No worries though, I just installed the free version and got to business. Well, after a year away from printing, I forgot a very important step. One that the software used to automate for me. Rotation. You see, if you print with a flat surface parallel to the printing screen, chances are high it's going to stick to that surface. You'll then spend the next few hours curing the same sheet of resin over and over and over again. After which, you'll have a great time cleaning up or replacing the film like I had to. Even without the auto-rotate button, this is easily avoided. Just rotate your model until most of the larger flat surfaces are at odd angles. Think. 20 to 70 degrees. That or slap way more support onto the model than you actually need to. That'll get the job done too. Finally, I'd like to take a step back from the models and talk about the space you print in. Resin printers smell 
terrible, and that smell permeates into every corner of your home. Don't kid yourself, they do, and if you don't think they do, you've either grown used to it or you have a non-functioning nose. Not only that, but this resin's fumes include VOCs, or volatile organic compounds, which aren't something you want floating around. So what do you do if you don't have a garage to throw your printer into? You could crank up an air purifier while you print, but that's not a great solution. Not all the contaminated air is going to be captured by the filter, and while it may reduce the stench in your home, it will only pull VOCs out of the air if it uses a carbon filter. For this reason, I recommend an enclosure. I picked this one out, link in the description below, which includes a hose and a fan to push contaminated air out in a controlled way. Ideally, you'll run the hose to the outside through a window where it can properly diffuse to negligible levels, as you can see I've done here. It's honestly not a bad idea to put a filter in at this stage as well, but I don't have one yet. If that's not practical, you can also vent straight into a carbon filter. I've had this set up for over a year now, and the quality complaints have stopped completely. Honestly, this whole topic deserves a video of its own, but to simplify for today, VOCs are widely understood to be harmful to your health. Basically, if we can do something simple to reduce our exposure to them, why wouldn't we? Hopefully outing myself as I've done today will save some of you from future headaches. Or maybe you're smarter than me and you just didn't need any of these warnings at all. How about your friends? Are they just getting into the hobby? Maybe pass the warning along. How about you? Are there any traps you fell into? Anything you can save others from? Go ahead and share your stories in the comments. 